Ever wanted to learn more about the people behind the speedruns? Right here. It's this one. My Insane Pace. My Insane Pace, ALT Insider here. I don't want to take too much of your time because I want to get right to this one, as you might imagine. Before we start the interview, though, I want to make sure you know Narcissa and Jane were so kind with their time today, and I want to make sure I get out there that they are trying to reach that funding goal for their movie, which you can find at BreakTheGameMovie.com. It's going to be all about Narcissa, and it's going to be about you know more in depth than what we talk about today. Even though we do get pretty in depth today, we go through the entire career of Narcissa, and uh, it was a really, really awesome time for me. I want to make sure I say thank you to Jane and Narcissa for their time because it was really, you know, when I started this show two years ago now, I never thought I'd be doing this. I could say that. I never thought I would be doing this. It was really special for me, and I hope it's special for you listening. And uh, obviously, Narcissa is a very special person, and uh, I said in my, my podcast about what's the most influential people in speedrunning. And she was number one. I still think that's true. And uh, yeah, that's why it means so much to me because it's, it's crazy. I still can't believe it. But uh, I'll stop talking. Let's get to it. My interview with Narcissa Wright and Jane. Enjoy. Hey, listen. Extremely special guest with us today. I can't wait to get into this one. I've been waiting for this for a while since I was since uh, I knew it was on the schedule. So first I want to introduce, we have Narcissa Wright in the house. How you feeling, Narcissa? Um, a little nervous, <laughs> but most, mostly good. <laughs> You're nervous. I, I think I'm more nervous than you for sure. Jane, and you are in the house as well. How are you doing, Jane? Um, I'm doing very well. And I can kind of imagine how nervous you might be because I felt that nervous when I met Narcissa for the first time. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I just to, to get while we're here, we're here to talk and have a good time, of course, but also you're here because you're, you know, there's an awesome movie that you guys are making. I've seen the trailer for it. It looks really interesting called Break the Game, which you can find at breakthegame.com. And you're doing something special this weekend, Jane. So I'll let you explain that just for the people that don't listen to the whole thing, those 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 nasty people that don't listen to the whole interview. Go ahead, Jane. Yeah, and it's uh it's break the game break the game movie.com. Excuse excuse me, break the game movie.com. Yeah. Um and what we're doing this weekend is any donation um or increase in a pledge goes towards winning what I think is one of the coolest pieces of speedrunning memorabilia ever. It's gonna be an Ocarina of Time cartridge signed by Narcissa, Joden Stone, Skater, and Torge. Oh, I didn't even know that. That's pretty hardcore. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's pretty good price. That's pretty crazy. So, uh, yeah, guys, this this weekend, this when this episode goes live, that's that will be uh, available and ready for you. It'll be the weekend when this goes live. So, yeah, be sure to do that because it's a good th- cause. And we're going to talk more about the movie again at the end of this interview. For sure, but stay tuned for that if you want to learn more about it. And also just go to BreakTheGameTheMovie.com. You can check out the trailer as well and just uh, see what you think about it for sure. But, um, okay, let's get into it. Um, first, thanks for your time. It's, been, it's really awesome to have your time here. This, it's an incredible opportunity. So I want to make sure I make the most of this. But um, I, uh, I posted a podcast last year, which Jane talked about in the you know, asking for this interview. And uh, I said, top five most influential people in speedrunning. Uh, by the way, it was TMR, Trihex, Michael Yama, Siglemic, and you, Narcissa, right? And you were number one for sure. And uh, no one really could disagree with that at all. Uh, what do you think when I, when you hear that? What is that? How does, do you think you're influential? Do you have that memory of like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty influential. You know what? I'm pretty cool. <laughs> but what, what do you think about that? Does it matter to you, that title that I, I bestowed upon you? Uh... Well, I mean, I actually do agree that I probably was the most influential, (laughs) but I don't know how much it matters, especially at this point. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, it's kind of a piece of history or it's kind of, um, I don't know, it all happened. (laughs) That is for sure. It definitely happened. And, uh, you know, it just, you got there really, you're one of the people that were at the trailblazers of of speedrunning for sure. Now it's, you know, speedrunning is kind of a normal thing now, but I think it's easy to forget that when you started it, it was this thing that wasn't a thing, right? I mean, what can you tell us about the early days when you first started? Well, I mean, it, it was a thing, but it it really exploded after we got the live streaming going. That's like, and then, you know, building the whole community based around that really got a whole bunch of people. Like, it kind of turned into a lifestyle <laughs> instead of, like, just a hobby. But, I mean, it's still a hobby, but it was... I don't know. It was crazy times. So what can you tell us about that? What was it that kind of, 
you know, I know you, you talked about your your kind of roots in, in speedrunning for sure, so I don't want to rehash all that. But what can you tell us about those early days when you were, what were you doing at that time? Were you just like a, a hobbyist? You know, you still had a, you know, you obviously maybe still working or a student, I don't even know, and just speedrunning for a hobby. What was that like in the early days of your speedrunning career? Well, I mean, way back before the live streaming, I was, I mean, I was interested in, I mean, I, I even like mailed this tape to Twin Galaxies of a Beetle Adventure Racing track record that I got back in like 2000. I forgot if it's 2003 or 2004. And then, of course, with like Kazooie coming out with all these Ocarina of Time videos that were really <laughs> kind of profound or mind blowing at the time, um, eventually leading me into. Uh, being really interested in that one glitch reverse bottle adventure that was found and like how you're like writing bits of memory and values that can kind of make magical things happen. And so I was really interested in that. And then around then I was a college student and I remember like in between classes, like walking down the street, thinking about like the reverse bottle adventure glitch and like, trying to think if there's any other cool stuff that could be done or something. But yeah, so I was like in college and then uh, right near the end of college, I had just launched Speedruns Live. So kind of what happened was I got super into Zelda, Got I launched the Zelda Speedruns, and then we all started working on it more and talking IRC and then racing it against each other. And that turned into like not just Zelda, but other games. So that's where Speedruns Live came from. And of course, big shout out to Giano for doing a lot of work with programming and stuff. He he was like learning programming at the time and he uh, did a lot. Back in those days, I mean, when did you kind of decide to, I want to stream this to an audience, right? Because I always think it takes a special person to, to, to want to stream and stream successfully. Uh, what kind of led to you tr doing that? Was it just to get the races on, on the computer? Again, it was Giano, like, first streaming his Majora's Mask attempts. This was way back when it was, like, I think it was, it might have still been above two hours. And just being able to see runs happening in real time was, like, so exciting. And, like, I could tell it was, like, totally the future. Um, so of course I wanted to do it as well. And there was like a couple other people back then who started streaming and it went from Ustream to Justin TV, then Justin TV became Twitch, Twitch became acquired by Amazon for just about a billion dollars and the whole thing exploded. Mm -hmm. I like to, some people, you know, new people to speedrun don't know, but there was a time when you know, there was no watching runs on, uh, watch people do runs. It was people would send videos in and then you'd see the, you know, that was the world record. You watch a video, a recorded video of someone playing that. Just, it's a different world than it is now, obviously. Um, but how about, could, when did things kind of pick up in terms of your kind of viewership and growth thing? I know it happened very quickly. It was very early. Um, but what, what, you know, what was that like? Well, that was really cool. The first one I remember was, when someone, some staff member of Justin TV, like featured my stream because I was doing 24 hour Ocarina of Time MST attempts. And at the time, there was this Japanese player. Uh, I can't even remember their name. Damn it. <laughs> but they, they had the best time. And I was like going for a faster run. And I remember, like, <laughs> it's funny, like, I couldn't do one bomb super slides very well in Ocarina of Time. And then we started to realize that if you use two bombs, you can get the consistency higher because there's not like this kind of broken frame window where it's like one frame it works, next frame it doesn't, next frame it works. It was more like a kind of a nice big window. So I was able to <laughs> do all my super slides. And I think uh, around that time, that might have been when the spirit hover started getting added to the runs or something. And then later ZFG got into it and then it was me versus ZFG for a while. But Anyway, I was just doing this like 24 hour thing and yeah, some staff member saw it, featured it. Suddenly there was like a thousand plus viewers. I thought that was cool. Ended up getting partnership afterwards. 
And I was like, oh, wow, that's awesome. So I just kept doing it. And then it really, I don't know, it kept kind of growing. And then eventually when I switched to Wind Waker, it really grew. That was like in 2012. And, you know, it's funny, like when I first started Wind Waker, it was like, I just, again, it was from Speedruns Live. We were all just like racing to like the first pearl or the first, or I'll get all the pearls. So that's just like part of the game. But we would, it was just fun, and I just kind of fell in love with the game. And then suddenly, I guess because it was such a long game, and it had such kind of like iconic, peaceful vibes, suddenly everyone wanted to watch. And I think, I think I don't know, <laughs> it was just a good stream. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, just for people that don't, you know, again, new, a lot of new people in speed right now might not know. But in these times, 2012, 2013, when you put, went to Twitch. It was Narcissus at the top with the most viewers by far. Now, this is a time when a thousand viewers is like, I don't know, in 2019 equivalent is 20,000, 30,000 around there. I mean, it, it's just, it's this insane number. And uh, yeah, it was, it was, you were, you were the, definitely on top of, of, of all the speedrunning world then for sure. And uh, that kind of leads me to the next thing when, you know, you obviously your stream's doing great. Everyone knows you. You're kind of the face of speedrunning, kind of. I mean, Siglemic was there too at that time as well. Uh, so then you get to AGDQ 2013 and can you tell us about that run? Because that I think is, that's the top two for sure in terms of, uh, impact. Are, are you talking about the Ocarina of Time? Any percent? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. What can you can, <laughs> tell us a little bit about that experience? Cause I think in terms of impact there, there's, there's one or two ones that might or maybe in the running, but that's gotta be there. That run just changed so many lives. I think in terms of, wow, this is awesome. This is what speedrunning is. I didn't know this existed. And it's all thanks to you. So what, what tell us about that experience, what that was like for you. Um, so yeah, Runner Guy had just been finishing up his hundred percent. And then I had offered to do any percent, and that was a bit after, you know, the wrong warp <laughs> was added to the run, so it suddenly cut down uh even further. And yeah, I could do the run. It was uh it was still pretty early. There was no like tower clip or anything. But when I sat down, it was kind of like all those years of passion just kind of were flowing out of me. So the commentary was really like something about it was magical. And like, I remember finishing the run and feeling like I had just done something really amazing or important, even though the time wasn't super amazing. The time wasn't that great. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Who cares, though? <laughs> yeah. Like, I just remember thinking like, wow, I just really killed it or like nailed it. And then that actually, I mean, that kind of led into the second half of the event for me, where suddenly after that, I felt like I had super high standards. And then my Wind Waker run, I got flustered and it was, um, I kind of felt like I disappointed myself. But yeah, Any, anyway, the, the Ocarina of Time run was, I agree, it was like a pretty special run. That's cool. You can feel too, because, you know, a lot of times people that are on the show, I ask them about runs, they don't really didn't really get the grasp of the, the weight of what they did, but that one is just, yeah, how you, you kind of, the best runs I think are celebrate a community. You know what I mean? Like it, the, obviously you're celebrating the skill of the runner at, at the, on the controller, but the best runs that you kind of memorable ones are when you celebrate a community as well. And you could feel oh, yeah. all this think, work, you know? Yeah. I think that run, it, <laughs> it wasn't really celebrating my skill or anything. It really was celebrating like the years of Ocarina of Time research that had led to, um, all the things that were possible and were still <laughs> yet to be discovered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just a real, if anyone hasn't seen that, that's like r mandatory viewing for sure. Um, so let's go through, you know, other things in your speedrun career, obviously. Uh, I think, again, something you have that I think is the most memorable in history is one of the most legendary world records, one of the most legendary re uh, uh, reactions to a world record. Uh, Ocarina of Time is dead. That's over. Uh, how long did that take to get that record? How much did it mean to you at that time? Um, I remember playing like it was a full-time job and it kind of was and, um, every day for hours and hours, um, for a few months. Yeah, it was an interesting experience because leading up to it, uh, there's controversy with the IQ player being this, uh, strange console. Then also me having to learn the controller, which actually, it's actually a really nice controller. I mean, I know not a lot of people have, uh, felt it, but. Uh, it's really comfortable and the stick felt uh, very nicely sensitive 
uh, like a good amount of sensitivity for doing ESS position and extended super slides. So it was actually kind of more comfy than virtual console, but so I learned it. And then I remember at one point during this, uh, someone offered to actually give me an S video mod for it because it only had composite cables and someone modded it for S video. And one of my PBs is recorded in S video off the IQ, which is pretty cool because it's like a really rare mod. <laughs> but, <laughs> That's um, awesome. But um, eventually the cable started to like malfunction. So I just went back to composite. And then when I finally got the run, uh, yeah, the run was like really good. There was these two pauses I had to do when I missed something by one frame and then I tried to pause buffer then I paused early. So I paused twice more than I should have. And that cost about four seconds. So the 1810 could have been maybe an 1806, but the Kakariko section was so good and then everything else went perfect. So I felt like kind of amazingly relieved afterward, despite there being this little blight, this little mistake around the halfway point of the run, I think. And so, yeah, I cried afterwards. It felt like this big, like I was done with it. And then later that night afterwards, like after the stream was over, I remember like kind of almost pacing back and forth, thinking about the two pauses that I did and how I had lost like a little bit of time and like, oh God, do I really want to go back and like try to improve this? And I finally decided kind of no, I didn't. So then I, again, with my stupid high standards, I wanted to make some like really, really good commentary and I really struggled to commentate it like it took me a long time to put it together and then i don't know if i even really liked the commentary that much although a lot of other people did but i think the live video was perhaps more interesting for a lot of people like the the natural reaction oh my fucking god dude just to get the tower clip and um yeah ocarina of time is dead which actually ended up becoming a little bit of hyperbole that came back to bite me in the ass when when uh you know, of course, the time lowers and lowers, and then even new things were found. Um, I even thought of like, kind of how I'd describe it is that, like, Link becomes Link becomes a magician and pulls a blue potion out of nowhere, because <laughs> that's what the run turned into, um, and that's really amazing. That even in such a short run, where there's not that much room for improvement and there's not many like objects to interact with or like other things to find that there was actually a way to skip going to Kakariko that was really incredible and of course when that first happened I was like wow do I go back to it now but um one unfortunate thing though is because of the virtual console control stick sensitivity it made the ESS even harder and I also think I was kind of moving on or changing like sometime after the 1810 run so i just kind of dabbled in the new glitch a little bit and then just dropped off just for my own interest because i know when i would watch your streams back then it would be kind of it seemed very chill like you oh, i'm just playing a game you know and i know you had those you set goals for yourself and you you got those goals uh but how much were you thinking about your viewership and like you know that kind of stuff did you worry about that side of things you say if people watch me people watch me that's fine i got i gotta i'm accomplishing my goal right now what, what were you out in that kind of scope of things were you worried about your viewership and stuff um i think all throughout i think all throughout like all the way up to 2015 i don't think i was worried about my viewership i think i was um enjoying it i think i mean honestly like if you're sitting there and like there's all these people and they're enjoying it with you and they're they're there with you and like they're supporting you financially and like sending you all these messages and they're like really excited when you're having fun <laughs> it's like that's a lot of dopamine and, <laughs> and and so i don't know it was actually like a really privileged position to be in you mentioned about the the run getting shorter new things being found um uh, we just had an interesting talk with majin phil majors master runner and post squitter about the same thing I don't know if you heard about it, the news about the debug menu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard about the, it. <laughs> it's kind of, what, what do you think about that? The future of speedrunning is kind of, if, if you know, the, the better we get at finding things in games in terms of co digging through the code and finding things, like more of the stuff's going to be found, right? I mean, you think that's a good thing or a bad thing overall? Um, I think unearthing it's very interesting. So I think it's a good thing. Um, of course, you could 
run it on VC or whatever and not do the debug thing if yeah. you don't want to. But uh, I do think it's really fascinating, like what's possible and what eventually is found, even if it was that, um, was it Wii U VC only or something? Yeah, one, one of the, yeah, it has to be Wii U, yeah. Yeah, that's a bit unfortunate. And also, I've, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard the reason it's VCU only is because it's um it it requires the d-pad to be mapped and like they didn't map it on the other versions or something something like that yeah 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 that's just really unfortunate i think it's a really interesting find though like i think that stuff's really cool Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah it definitely is cool i worry that it it can just make another because the whole majority mass community is thinking like do we need to do another category now and there's like 15 categories you know and stuff like that but i think it'd be fun too but it does kind of (laughs) well yeah so, you know, I made that kind of poem video a while back called All the Categories Are Arbitrary. And like, yeah. I think that really does apply with speed running where you kind of get all these blurred lines. And if you have kind of community decisions trying to set the standards, then you have different kind of clicks. Uh, it, it It's kind of, um, there's no right answer. <laughs> so... It is what it is, and mm. that's just like an unfortunate part of it. I mean, I think if a game is designed really well, and things are just like kind of cleanly cut and work out, then that's that's like less pain for everybody. But oftentimes, yeah. especially in this in this like uh, world of games that are, you know, being like broken in weird ways, you're always going to have some like weird gray area stuff happening, and so. Yeah, it just is what it is. Yeah, and it's not, it's actually not doing good things for the Majora's Mask community because it did kind of, like you said, make clicks and people splitting up, you know, and, oh, it's just uh, the big runners want to do this and they're kind of controlling things. And like, is you know, you obviously have a lot of times one of the best minds in speedrunning. What do you think about that? Uh, should there be kind of leadership in speedrunning or do you just let, like if you have to make a vote on something like this, who gets the vote in your, who would you, you let vote on that stuff? Is it the... Is it everybody? Is it everyone that has a run in the last year? Is it every who who should vote on that kind of no, decision? Honestly, Peter? like I've been on like every side of this before, and I just don't even know anymore. I honestly, <laughs> yeah, like people should just do what they want to do, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I'm sorry, I have no answers. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I mean, I, I mean, I used to, you know, I used to be an IRC typing away and like trying to find what would work best for everybody for like hours and hours. And like in the end, I, I don't think I satisfied <laughs> anyone really. So, yeah, yeah. I think it's just a tough question. There is, like you said, no good answer for that. Um, I want to fast forward a little bit. Intended world championships. Awesome thing. Uh, what was it like to, to go there and get that invite? I mean, it had to be pretty exciting, right? It was really exciting. I felt like I had just got the golden ticket to Willy Wonka's chocolate factory or something. So um yeah i i was very thankful and i ended up buying splatoon in preparation (laughs) splatoon one yeah and uh actually what's kind of amazing is that my splatoon one training like we barely our team barely won the splatoon challenge it was like just barely so if i would have lost that i would have had to go to the lower bracket where it was like basically certain death (laughs) yeah yeah i pretty much guaranteed would have lost if I would have if I would have lost the Splatoon thing, I would have lost the underground right away. So I would have been knocked out. So the Splatoon training paid off. Unfortunately, I did not have any Mario Kart training, so I sucked. <laughs> then I went to the lower <laughs> bracket. And then, you know, it was kind of miraculous, but there was balloon fight, balloon trip. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, wow, like I used to play this in the Animal Crossing <laughs> uh, ROM. <laughs> so I was like, holy shit, I can win this. And then... I did, and then it was Smash, and then I got through Smash, and then uh, <laughs> Mario Maker, I did not win <laughs> on the last level. I, I did really bad, but it was really amazing, and getting top two was also really special to me because I got the signed 3DS from Miyamoto, which felt really magical, and I was really blessed. Now, 2015, you know, obviously November 2015, Narcissa Wright comes to the world, and, you know, you, just, you kind of make this big announcement. The reasons I kind of think are un- unimportant is just your own reasons. But I want to know what it was like in terms of your feeling, right? Because, I mean, that's an incredibly scary, brave thing to do. I, I don't know. It's, I, I, don't, I can't 
pretend to imagine the emotion you're going through. Cause can you kind of share that with us? What that, what that was like in late 2015 for you? Um, I mean, I think my first tweet, uh, about it seize the day. I think that that's kind of how I was feeling. I needed to seize the day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I did at whatever cost. Mm -hmm. And what, how about like leading up to that? You know, it's just this, I don't think it's a decision that happens quickly. Right. I mean, how long were you maybe thinking about this kind of coming out like this, you know? Uh, more vaguely in the past, and then it started to solidify more, especially in 2015. And then it suddenly started to feel possible. So <laughs> then it felt like, well, what am I doing then? I I should do it. Wow, it just it takes a lot of bravery to do what you did. So I, I, when that when you turn on that record, I know you got to push start streaming on that OBS or whatever you're using. What was that feeling like pushing that button for the first time? You know, because you knew you were going to set the speedrunning world, the internet. I mean, internet on fire, right? What was that like? I don't know. I just it went live. And then, um, <laughs> yeah, I think my my streams there were pretty awkward, and uh, I probably ended up alienating a lot of people. I think, although I think over the last whole year, like. Uh, Sorry, I mean 2015. I probably actually ended up alienating a lot of people. Like, my mind was going to all sorts of other places. Like, after the Ocarina of Time 1810 grind, it was like, you can almost see this, like, swirling, like, statistical, like, if I pour this much time in, maybe my time will get this percent better, sort of, like, speedrun void where it felt like there wasn't much there once the run is kind of figured out and so i started thinking about things like the real world and and uh like physics and nature and uh i don't know i just got all kinds of inter <laughs> interdisciplinary vibes like I wanted to look into all these different things and I kind of started to see the world differently. So things were changing a lot. I also Smash Wii U came out then and um, I guess I enjoyed uh, playing that. I was playing as Zelda. She was quite low tier and I just, um, it was it was just kind of a challenge to see if I could overcome other players online and of course every time you play it's different so it gave me a little bit more uh variety i guess compared to the grindy speedrun stuff i was doing of course this is a very personal uh decision like like um like i didn't do it for anyone else like playing smash or anything or like my other interests i was getting i was doing that all for myself like, uh, I wasn't incentivized in any way to kind of pursue the things I was interested in other than my own desire or drive. And so I was just changing. Yeah. And how did you feel about the response to the community then? Because obviously, you know, there was some, you lost some followers and stuff, obviously you said in that, how, what were you feeling at that time from that? Did you not care? Cause you're just, Hey, I'm doing what I want. And if you want to leave F you, right. What, what were you feeling at that time? Well, I was feeling, um, I just gone through kind of like a painful breakup and also, um, like I had to worry about my living situation and of course my interests were changing and also my hands were getting really bad after all the smash. So like I couldn't, I couldn't play as much and yeah, I don't know. It, it's sort of like everything was kind of changing and unfortunately i was having a really hard time and i felt kind of edgy <laughs> and like i was i don't know like i remember making some stupid tweets that kind of uh irked and annoyed like other people in the speedrun community and i don't know i just felt like it was a hard time and i i did push a lot of people away mm-hmm 
Do you think that any, any side of that was because, you know, you know how Twitch viewers are very fickle, right? I mean, if anybody, anybody in speed running, if, if I, if you watch ZFG and if ZFG is a huge, uh, uh, Zelda player, if he plays any other game, but, but that his, his viewership's at cut in half. I mean, that's just how it goes on Twitch. Uh, so did you have, did you kind of have difficulty with that too? When you're obviously doing something else that wasn't speed running and people kind of get away from that, that has to be difficult to handle, right? If it's, especially if it's your living, you know, you get money from people viewing you and being there, but when you switch games, do what your interests lie, you get less viewers, right? Is that difficult to deal with or was it difficult to deal with? Um, it was kind of like, you know how earlier I was talking about how you get all these people supporting you, excited, having fun when you're having fun, and then they're, and that's like a huge, almost like dopamine thing. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like getting addicted or even used to that, and then suddenly that's gone. <laughs> that's like it's almost like a withdrawal or something it, it uh yeah that's kind of how it felt so do you think some of these kind of tweets maybe was kind of like to get more attention on yourself or something maybe like that i mean maybe subconsciously or something yeah but something like that i think um a little bit of almost lashing out or something um and also i think Despite having these like new interests, I couldn't find any path to tread except kind of my own wandering path. <laughs> so I was still pretty lost. And I just had this streaming stuff going on as well, but it was like dwindling fast. And did you at that time, I know some, that, some videos you made were like, you know, people are leaving because of the transition and stuff. But, you know, now looking back, do you think, can you you think there's a mixture of like people leaving because transition people leaving because games, or do you think it was just because you changed games or just transition? What do you, what do you think thoughts now looking back to that? It's a big mix of everything. I think me just changing as a person, um, alienated people, my interest changing and, and me not wanting to like do the same kind of entertainment that I had been doing in the past. So, so I wasn't giving people what they'd come to expect. In fact, I was very different than that. And and also, you know, there's some bigotry or people who just simply just disagree with, uh, I don't know, like, you know, <laughs> those people are out there too. And Yeah, they're just the assholes, yeah. But yeah, they, they do exist for sure. And that's sure that was a that was some percentage of them. And there's, people leave for their own reasons, I guess. But yeah, I understand that. Especially when you're a streamer and you ha- kind of have to stream, right? It doesn't matter how you feel. And if you, if you don't feel like streaming for a week, you don't get money for a week. You know what I mean? So that's kind of, it's got to be a tough thing for streamers to deal with, right? It's weird, like... Around the 1810 run, I really felt like I was in many ways on top of the world. And, and my interest in maintaining like steady viewership and growing or whatever, like I, I almost felt like I was standing on this edge where I could have focused more on like trying to grow more on Twitch and and everything. But I felt again that I was being pulled in this other direction so i actually started to let it fall by the wayside a little bit i mean i was still streaming but i wasn't doing it for anyone else but myself do you think actually that because you got that goal the, of your of the the run the 1810 that you kind of didn't know your next goal is that a possibility too that maybe you know kind of goalless rudderless it's sort of like years of building this community and being involved with this and and streaming for countless hours and doing all these runs not just the 1810 but everything that came before it kind of all led to this kind of finality (laughs) where it it felt like my awareness had changed and i was interested in other things and i couldn't stop i couldn't i couldn't stop walking the path that i was drawn towards which was (laughs) <laughs> unfortunately it had led to several years of pain and suffering but but at least like i maintained being myself i guess yeah i mean that's that's important i mean a lot of people might have said well i'll just do whatever gets the viewers i'm gonna still do it forever but my heart's not in it you know and you didn't do that so that's something to be commended for sure yeah and of course the the glamour of streaming to all these people does so <laughs> kind of wear off especially if you're not personally invested in what you're doing like i, I was personally invested in the runs that I did, but then as I started to change, I think my interests started to lie elsewhere. 
Um, so Breath of the Wild, I want to talk about a little bit because I remember you would make these. You were really hyped about Breath of the Wild, yeah, and it came out and you played that a lot. Was this a, a, that kind of a reinvigoration of speedrunning? Maybe that kind of gave you a little bit of energy in that in that field. What do you think about when that time when that game came out? Yeah, I think so. It's of course it's a new Zelda game and it looks so amazing and is this huge world and i got really excited and i got all <laughs> i got all like oh my god like i i just want to i want to relive the glory days i want to do it even bigger than before and like i got all these feelings like that and a lot of i mean it was pretty miraculous but the joy con controllers were really nice on my hands and they were actually really quite optimal for playing breath of the wilds and so that worked out fine and uh, yeah, so things were going along, and I, I remember feeling awkward on stream a lot, but I was still enjoying the game a lot, and eventually we started to do runs, and those were actually, I remember working really hard on my um, all main quest runs, and I eventually did succeed in like getting this really nice time that was hard to beat, and it was not beaten until, well, I mean, the... The Champion Spell of DLC came out, which added new main quests, yep. and so I wanted to move over to the the champ the all main quests with the Champion Spell, Ed, which made it longer and even harder. And uh, at the time Champion Spell had came out, I like right before it came out, I was I was holding the record for all main quests and i was playing on master mode which was and i was also playing in english which both of those things slowed down the run but my run was still better than everyone else's run even though they were playing on normal mode in french or whatever <laughs> so so uh so i did well but then once champions ballad came out uh i think the the sheer length of the run, plus the route changing all the time. Oh my god, the route would change, and then we would like spend all this time learning the new routes. And then before we could even get runs done, there would be more new stuff to learn, and it was just like endless learning and no and no running. And then the learning felt not very stimulating because it was more like, okay, exactly which tree do I go for to do this launch? Now let's practice these launches and just all these different types of stasis launches and then suddenly oops like oh this has changed completely now you can do these like double speed launches and you have to like pause the game a lot and it started to irritate me <laughs> and like it just eventually i just felt worn down and um yeah i got worn down i think i had a pretty good run though like i think my all main quests run prior to the champions ballad was pretty sick even though like Okay, so people did continue to run all main quests after Champions Ballad came out. They continued to run it without the Champions Ballad quests. And those runs have gotten quite a bit faster thanks to like new tech, new routes, new tech, and um, you know, the bullet time bounces and also uh, using the like the double speed launches and things. Uh, so eventually my run did get taken down or like improved by quite a bit. Um, and that's the nature of speedrunning, of course. All these new things get found, but uh, yeah, I was still I was still pretty happy with the run at the time. Yeah, it was it was just fun. I remember it was fun to see Narcissa doing speedruns again. That was really that was really a fun time to see. Yeah, that. I mean, of course, when when it felt like I had to do all this, like it felt almost like labor. Like I need to go to this part of the game and grind this out to make sure my consistency is kind of good enough so I can actually add it to a run. And it felt very time consuming and also using my hands a lot and also it also felt like i didn't feel like mentally stimulated doing it i didn't sorry i didn't feel like stimulated doing it i did not feel um very rewarded and of course because my viewership was so much lower than it used to be i felt still kind of like depraved or yeah. something so even though it was healthy so though it was, yeah. it was actually it turned it turned kind of nasty at some points mm -hmm. I mean, you did, you did have a healthy viewing at that time. I mean, it obviously wasn't at the peak, but you still were like, you know, people would die for those numbers. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Like <laughs> I was doing some runs that were like when I was actually on a run and like things were good. Um, it was pretty exciting. And it was um, some of the stuff was really challenging too. God, like the flying on the box, like getting on the box, 
<laughs> getting it into the mine cart and then flying on it. Uh, that stuff was really fun to learn, like piloting it. It's a really intense, like you have to really react fast and like be be really on it, be sharp when you're playing. It was That was actually pretty rewarding. Uh, so then after, you know, after your kind of Breath of the Wild kind of, let's say, what do I call it? Like your kind of stint in Breath of the Wild finishes. Would you think that's again, did you feel positive or negative about that a speed running at that time you kind of like well i tried speed breath of the wild you did some good things but obviously that sounds like you didn't kind of weren't have as much fun as maybe you used to do speed running right yeah i think i wasn't having as much fun as before but um i've done a little bit of stuff here and there when uh let's see so castlevania 64 it's this game for the nintendo 64 <laughs> i used to run it and like i was looking into the game with some people and we found out that if you reset the game and you load up your save file the rng is like fixed to a specific value and you could actually use that to like manipulate this lizard man in this one room to walk in a very specific order to this door <laughs> like kind of randomly he chooses one of eight random spots in the room to walk to and if you use the RNG manipulation, you can get the lizard to walk very specifically towards this door, then to this other part of the room. And as he's turning towards the door, you can try to open the door, and that'll cause uh, Carrie to kind of like slide across the wall because the lizard's like uh, like the lizard's collision is pushing Carrie, so it makes it show so she can't walk through the door all the way, which lets you deload the room that you're in and when you deload it you can do like a slide jump and barely get through into this other area of the library which is somewhere you, where you have to go later and being able to skip that skip into there actually saves like a lot of time and that was not added into the record runs at the time and be, we found this manipulation and we kind of made it so that trick was more feasible and so suddenly the record dropped by several minutes and that was cool. And like, I, I ended up getting like a 37 54, but, uh, that wasn't the record and it's still kind of a bad run. And I didn't really feel like improving it much since then, but it was still, it was nice to dabble in that. And then another thing I did of course was all the speed of adventure racing stuff recently, uh, actually improved a couple track records and that's just a nice little bite-sized, you know, the tracks are a few minutes long. Pretty straightforward, but it's um, it just felt kind of fun to do. Right now, I mean, what do you think, what are you looking in terms of, you know, yourself as content creator? I mean, you know, what, what do you kind of see yourself doing in the future? Are you kind of just feeling it out, not sure what you're going to do? Um, okay, well, I have two thoughts as to that. One is that since Smash Ultimate came out, I've been playing that a lot. And actually lately, I've been in tournaments like daily, like Wi-Fi tournaments on Smash GG. Those are really fun. And well, some of them, some of them are kind of frustrating, but it's just such a nice like challenge. And um, I think Smash Ultimate might be the best game ever released <laughs> as of this moment. So I'm really into that. Of course, I used to be big into Melee like years ago, but uh Oh yeah, I remember watching you and Siglemic play with no no commentating, no the cameras, and you would get a lot of viewers doing that. That was a really cool time. Yeah, the, it was just fun to play Smash, <laughs> and I still love Smash, and so I'm still doing that really regularly. And actually, after we record this, Banjo Kazooie is being added to Smash. There you and go. <laughs> I'm about to go in hard on that character, <laughs> but uh. The other thing I wanted to say, though, was as far as like future or whatever, um, mm. I messed around with game development and actually learned 3D modeling, animation, and, you know, like 3D environment programming and all this other stuff. But I didn't know what to make. I didn't, eventually I just fit, like I fizzled out because I didn't know what I wanted to make. And I've released a game before, the game Cosmic Blocks. Uh, it's like a two player board game thing online that is i think it's a pretty cool game so i'm like pretty proud that i made it and i wouldn't mind doing more game dev stuff in the future but i need to actually have like a vision for what i'm trying to make otherwise i think it's too aimless and and being aimless i feel quite aimless i feel like life 
and time. I feel like I'm just like kind of riding in this ship and it's kind of sailing across some ocean of time and there's not much to do on the ship, but at least I can play Smash and <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, hopefully it goes somewhere interesting, the ship, because otherwise it's a little aimless. So any thoughts to kind of, hey, well, maybe I want to grab the, the wheel of this ship and do something. Maybe, you know, what are you kind of are you doing? At, what are your thoughts there? So once I got interested in physics and and like reality <laughs> or whatever, I started posting tons of interesting like blogs and discoveries and things. And I have this little Discord channel called Future Sight where I post lots of interesting little ways in which the world may be changing or like things may be or interesting things that are happening. Mm. And so I got really interested in um, one thing was the deep learning revolution, which is this AI revolution where they're using these neural networks for things like image classification, which can enable new things like self-driving cars, blah, blah, blah. But, um, but I think that kind of technology can lead to all sorts of things. And I think the possibilities might be really enormous. So I'm kind of like speculatively looking at that, like kind of whole area. And yeah, I'm just kind of keeping my eye out. I'm not really like too involved, <laughs> but I'm just kind of like looking. Cool, cool. That sounds good to me. Um, yeah, so I got just two more questions before we get to, so I definitely want to talk about the movie and what we're going to see with that. Um, I have to ask it. If I don't ask it, that would be people will get pissed. So Zelda Speed Run Live, I don't need to tell the whole story, of course. Um, but maybe when you when you took that name, do you think it was a part, a part of that kind of being maybe kind of dis- disenfranchised kind of from speedrunning at that time when you made the, tra- after the transition? Or what, what do you think about that? What you, Why do you think you did that then, you know? Yeah, so I owned the domain because I started it forever ago. And then it was originally a place to just post strategies and tricks and things. And we had forums and stuff. But then uh, as time passed, I mean, I had kind of stepped away. And I had also I had also created Speedruns Live, but had kind of given up ownership of that too. And I had felt kind of almost sad when I was like giving away the domain, um, gave it to Sloop. Who, I mean, I don't even really know who Sloop is, <laughs> but I just kind of gave him the this thing that I worked so hard on. But um, I don't know. I might've felt like a little pushed out or just like a loner or something. Mm-hmm. And then with ZSR, it's like I still owned that at least. And then I kind of saw these people making this kind of little hierarchical organization with like a chief of, chief of operations or whatnot. And it just felt very, um, I don't know. It just like something rubbed me the wrong way. I remember when the Breath of the Wild Discord started, like they initially made me a, like a staff member because of like who I was. But then the moment I like kind of gave my opinions and <laughs> they like took away the staff status and yeah, I don't know. I started to have a bit of bad blood with like some of the people. So I think, I don't know. I think I just let out some big fuck you. <laughs> like I remember, I remember uh, after I took my domain back, I remember jumping up and down in my apartment like a crazed monkey who had just won some kind of <laughs> like, I don't know. It was, it was really it was really primal and and i'm sorry i did it i you know well thanks for thanks for sharing that for sure because i know people uh you know it was, it was an interesting uh move there but you know now you're talking about it we can definitely you know it's good to see the reason behind something for sure so thanks for sharing that um but yeah i do want to kind of let's move into the movie a little bit here and uh what how this came to be so jane let's bring you back in here and kind of ask you was it did who did you approach Narcissa for this or how did this kind of come to be, Jane? Um, it kind of came to be by accident. Uh, I was not around in the early days of speedrunning. I didn't even know what a speedrun really was um, <laughs> until I think in 2015, around December, uh, I was playing Diddy Con Racing just casually and I couldn't beat a boss. And um, Basically, I just YouTubed it and I found Tofu's SGDQ run from 2013. 
And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> I was like, what is this? Who's watching this? What are these donations? Um, I was like mesmerized. It was so cool. Um, and then I just like kept letting videos play. And like I saw Sig Lemmix, one of his uh, GDQ runs. And I was like, oh my God, I love this game. This is, this is insane. <laughs> and I remember even in that run, I know, I think Narcissa was on the couch doing commentary. And I was like, who is this person? And like, it was really clear. I mean, it was clear people like love Siglamic, but it was like clear that people love Narcissa and that she was like a celebrity in this like weird subculture world that I had just found. Um, and like, then her, then her, um, GDQ 2013 run came up and I was like, oh my God. And then I just, I just like kept watching speed runs. And then I searched Narcissa's name and it was um, shortly after her transition. I went, oh, that's interesting. Let me check out her stream. And I saw that she was streaming um, all about it and being like really honest and open and vulnerable, which I had like never really seen online. And I guess I watched her stream for about a year and it wasn't until I saw that she wanted to make this comeback with Breath of the Wild that I was like, well, this is a story unfolding. I have to reach out to this person. So I sent her a DM and went out to meet her. Cool. So yeah, Narcissa, what was that like when you heard that? I mean, did you, <laughs> was it when someone asked to record you for a movie? I mean, it's got to be kind of a interesting question to receive, right? Yeah, I I wanted to make sure it was like legit, I guess. So we met up in person and we talked about it and yeah, I agreed to do it. Awesome. So what can we expect to, to see in this? I mean, is it, I, the trailer I saw, it looks like a lot of uh, watching Narcissa in her playing, playing the game. You're in the, in the wild kind of walking around at the pun on pun there, but what, what, what kind of you expect to see in this movie, Jane, I guess. Um, you're going to get kind of behind the stream behind the screen view of what it's been like for Narcissa over the past two years. Um, in addition to kind of having access to Narcissa's like insane catalog of streams, because she's saved all of them since 2015 and has a lot of oh, them wow. saved from before then. Yeah, I have 3,000 hours of, of footage that I've gone, that I've gone through. Um, oh my god! Yeah, it's insane. <laughs> like. A lot of footage, but I have also um, did about 10 trips filming with Narcissa over that time. So, like, that moment that uh, Narcissa played Breath of the Wild for the first time, like, we went over to her place right when she finished streaming. So, so we were there for, like, all kind of, like, all these big moments that people might remember from the stream, but... <laughs> so you can like you had, since you have that footage you can kind of remember I just mentioned like you know 1810 or something you'll show like clips from that kind of cool stuff as well you know those kind of big moments in the your know, Twitch career and YouTube career yeah but it's it's gonna go it's gonna go a lot further than that um and I think you'll get an even kind of bigger picture of um what Narcissa's life has been and also like the life of her stream like she's also saved the chat so there are people who have their own stories kind of in the stream who kind of things happen. Like you probably saw, you probably saw um, in the trailer, you probably saw a D girl. Like for example, that wasn't a thing when I first started making the movie, but like, since we have those streams, I was able to kind of go back and you can kind of see a, like a record of like a relationship through Narcissa's stream. And I filmed like with Narcissa, like meeting D girls. So like, I think I think it'll be really interesting for people to see what what what's beyond just the stream, but also get a better idea of the stream as well. That's cool if you can document the chat and stuff. Because I mean, a stream is really like a long term stream, like Narcissa you had. It's like a it has like a life of its own, you know. Like it's really has dips and valleys and big moments and kind of sad moments and stuff. That's pretty cool to, especially if that much that much footage to go through. That'd be really cool to to go through. Um, so yeah, so again, I want to make sure we, we say it, I guess before we get to that though, I want to know like what's kind of, cause you know, every director you got to, you're trying to convey a feeling right with your movies. I guess, Jan, I want to ask you, what kind of feelings are you trying to, you know, ex make, let us feel with this movie about, about Narcissa? 
Um, well, it's kind of dictated by sort of by Narcissa's feelings. I think a lot of the movie, I think, will feel a little bit bittersweet, a little bit nostalgic, um, emotional. Um, those are some of the feelings. Can you give me a percentage complete rate? You know, what's your, what's your clear rate so far? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I'd say, well, we finished most almost all of the filming except for a few little pickups. So I guess if we've been doing 2.5 years, I'd say we're like five eighths done. Five eighths, okay, fast five fifty percent for sure. Uh, yeah, so okay, I want to make sure we send people to the make sure go to breakthegamemovie dot com and remember the promotion here. So if you increase your pledge or make your first pledge. You're in the running for a signed thing with all these people Jane is going to tell you right now. Go ahead, Jane. Yes, yeah, signed um, Ocarina of Time cartridge, signed by Narcissa, Joden Stone, Skater, and Torge. Huge. That belongs in a museum, if you, if you get that, by the way. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I, I, I'm like kind of jealous. Like, I, I sort of want it, but... That's an insane um, prize. I will, be, uh, I will be giving it away. <laughs> awesome, guys. So, yeah, one more time, breakthegamemovie.com. Let's support this. Narcissa, I want to give, make sure you say thanks for your time a lot. I mean, yeah, thanks. I could go for an hour here, but um, your legacy... Will never be forgotten in this in this hobby. You've done so much for a lot of people. So many people are speedrunning now because of you. I'm not sure how much you understand it. I don't know. I'm not sure I understand it fully, but I know it's a lot of people. So uh, you've done a lot of people. I hope you can look back on this in the end and think of it as a happy thought. And if I ask you that now, yeah, I think I do. Is it okay? That's what I wanted to hear. I'm happy to hear that because uh, you have given me a lot of fun, and you gave me you've given millions of other people a lot of fun too. So. Thanks so much for your time, guys. Jane, you were awesome. Good luck with the movie. Thank you. Break the, break the game, movie.com. Awesome thing, guys. Thanks again for your time here. This was just really awesome for me. Thank you for having us. Thank you.